In this start to finish video we're going to take a look at creating a 3D border and we're going to be adding text to it as well. Right, a few other things before we start. It doesn't matter if you are using a landscape format image. It could be a portrait format, it could be 16 by 9 as we've got here, it could be square format, it could even be a panorama. It doesn't matter, you can easily follow along with this as well. Now something else, as I've already said, it's start to finish. This particular image is in layers. It's been saved as a .psd file. This is what I term as being my master copy. Notice I didn't use the word piece. Right, so I don't want to change. I don't want to adjust this in any way, shape or form. So the workaround for that is to go up to File. We're going to go down to Duplicate. Now when the Duplicate Image dialog box opens, I'm going to click right on the end there and I'm going to remove Copy and 07 so it gives you a chance to rename it. This is Bamba Castle. It's on the Northumberland coast up in the northeast of England here in the UK. Absolutely spectacular. Right, while I'm at it, a bit of a cunning plan. I'm going to highlight Bamba Castle. Use Command C, Control C, which of course is Edit and Copy. As I said, a bit of a cunning plan for this. I'm going to tick the Duplicate Merge Layers only. Now what this is going to do, it's going to duplicate the document and it's going to merge those layers down. There it is, so we've now just got the background layer. We can close our original, our master copy. That is now safely out of the way. Next, we're going to come up to Image. We're going to go to Resize. We're going to go to Image Size. This is showing us the pixel dimensions, which is 26.4 megabytes in size. It is 4,847 pixels. You can see the height there. The document size, which is displayed in inches. Of course, it could be centimeters, millimeters, whichever one you're comfortable working with. The resolution is 300. Now, it doesn't matter even if you're using it for web size. Leave the resolution as it is, and you might want to put in here, I don't know, 1024 if it's for web use. I'm going to be doing this for print, so I'm going to swipe across and I'm going to put in 10. Something else you may now notice is it was 26.4, it is now 10.1 megabytes in size. We're going to click OK to that. It's disappeared slightly. I've got the hand tool, so I just need to press Command or Control. You now get the zoom tool. I'm going to zoom into that area there. will be pretty good. So the layers panel, we're going to duplicate the background layer. I'm going to use Command J or Control J. So we've now duplicated the background layer. I'm now going to go back to image. We're going to go back to resize, but this time we're going to go to canvas size. And again, you can see the current size, there's that 10.1. There's the size we put in. This could, as I said, it could be uh, 1024 pixels. Now it's down here that we can add the border around the outside of the image. Now for this particular one, and this is where experimenting will come in again, I want to add uh, roughly about an inch to the width and about an inch and a quarter to the height just to give me a little bit of room for the text. Now as I've said before this could equally be pixels, centimeters, millimeters and you'll see it from the, the drop down menu there. Now adding an inch to the width is going to be easy that's just going to be 11. 1.25 can be a little bit more difficult if you've got figures such as this but we can make it relatively easy. A bit of a clue there just tick relative. Now as I said with the width I'm going to put in an inch with the height, I'm going to put in uh, 1.25 and so just taking a look at the anchor point, make sure that is in the center. It will not work if anything else is ticked, so make sure it is in the center. The canvas extension color, you have got gray, you've got black, you've got white, you've got foreground, background. You can also click on this and you can choose whatever color you want here from the, uh, the color picker. But I'm going to click cancel. I'm leaving it set on white, which is showing here. Click on OK. Now, if it doesn't look right to you, just use Command Z, Control Z. That's Command Z, Control Z to undo. Go back into the dialog box and just adjust the figures until it looks right. Next, looking at this, I want to give myself a little bit more space to the bottom. Well, on layer one, I'm going to press V on the keyboard or select the Move tool. Now, with the Move tool, I'm going to hold down Shift on the keyboard and I'm going to use the up would face in arrow so that's the up arrow and we just nudge it up I'm going to take it into that area something like that where it looks roughly equal to the side giving me just a little bit more space on the bottom not easy to see with this but got a little bit of double ripple down the bottom there so I'm going to click on the background layer 
we're going to come up to edit we're going to go down to fill layer and we're going to fill layout. You've got a choice here of black, you've got 50% uh, gray. We're going to go for white, going to click OK. Watch what happens, looking much neater. The next thing we need to do is we need to put our background layer on top of layer 1. To do that, we need to unlock it, we need to remove the padlock. Bring your cursor anywhere over this area here, just double click. That brings up new layer to give it a name of your choice but I quite like layer 0 so we're going to click on OK you'll notice the padlock has now been removed we can click down we can lift it up make sure you get that solid black line we can drop it into position like this but now we can't see the image underneath bring your cursor over the thumbnail of layer 1 press and hold down command or control you can see the way your cursor changes gets a little square on the back we can click down we've made a selection don't forget we are working on layer 0 so all you need to do is press delete on the keyboard pressing delete we can now see the image looking pretty good too right I'm going to zoom in over this area I always get a little bit nervous when I see something like that so I'm going to press uh, yeah H on the keyboard to give me back the hand tool pressing command or control let's zoom into the image into 100% that looks good leaving the selection going around the outside the reason for that is we're going to go up to edit this time we're going to go down to stroke outline selection now we got a width of 10 pixels that looks pretty good if you're doing this for web size you may need to drop this down to 3 4 pixels if you're using a4 a3 a3 plus you may need to take this up in size so I'm going to click on the box there I'm going to go for a gray color and just bringing it up into that area there I just want to make it look as if the map border has been cut so I just want to change the, the color there very slightly click OK to that the other important thing is make sure location is set to inside so in other words the stroke border is going to go inside of the selection click OK now I've deliberately done this too big just to show you that's not going to look right so if it doesn't look right just use command Z control Z go back to edit go back to stroke outline selection reduce it down and I know with this one it's going to be roughly about 10 pixels I'm going to click OK that looks much better using command 0 control 0 to go to fit on screen we can now use command D control D which of course is select deselect one other thing I like to do with the, the map board is to go to filter we're going to go down to noise we're going to go to add noise and you're thinking why am I adding noise to this well if we just take a look at it if I just pump that right up for a second just taking a look at this it is solid white if I click down you can see there it is there is no pixel detail in this at all some important things make sure you tick monochromatic because if you've got color that doesn't look particularly good I've also got uniform and I'm going to drop this right the way down to around about three four there that area there clicking down there's the before there's the after just gives a little bit of texture to it making it look as if it is on a card background click OK to that looking pretty good so far something else you might want to do is to put a shadow on the inside to do that we're going to go down to effects now with effects we need to go to styles styles the drop down menu we're going to go to drop shadow and we've got a choice here we got the high we got the low we got the hard I'm going to go for the low so I'm just going to double click it's telling me that yeah smaller size but I'm just going to click OK anyway and you can see that looks pretty good but we can make changes we're going to go back to layers a little FX icon has been added indicating that the layer style has been applied thank you for the prompt if we double click on this there's our style settings all I'm going to do is take the size up which is going to soften it off bringing my cursor out I'm now going to move it so we got the there the drop shadow showing to all four sides and I'm just going to reduce the distance just a little bit like that great stuff I like the way that's looking let's click OK to that text coming over to the toolbox we're going to pick up the text or the type tool I'm going to click down on this area here don't forget we copied the name that was my cunning plan I'm now going to use command V or control V which of course is edit and paste and uh, yeah Bamba Castle has been applied you can see there it is it's taken the foreground color which is this gray 
Now it's not been committed yet, it's still shown it at layer 2, so you can click on the tick or just double click on the T here. That has now committed it, it's now saying Bamba Castle on the layer. Let's just lift this up in, no, alright, leave it there. Right, we can make some changes. Let's double click to highlight it. Let's come down to Tool Options. Now here we can change a few different things. I'm going to change the color to, uh, let's go to white like this and you're thinking why on earth are you doing white well again another cunning plan you can change the font as well this is where we can change the font from this drop down menu here we've got a huge amount here and uh, let's try something like um, I'm looking for that one I can't remember what it's called now oh yeah I know what it's called it's called sand and there it is there the list in the handwriting one. Right, we can make it bigger or smaller. Yes, we can use that. Pressing Command or Control, you now get these grab handles. You can click down, you can make it bigger in size like this. You can drop it down in size like that. Let's take it up in size just for the moment. I'm now going to just double click again, and there it is. And you're thinking, where? Well, there it is. If we put it in this position here, again, another cunning plan. We just need to come to where it says Effects. I'm going to press and hold down Alt or Option. Holding down Alt or Option, lifting on this FX, you'll notice a double arrow for my cursor. That says it's copying the layer stars. We can drop it in on Bamba Castle. Looking pretty good like this. Once again, I'm just going to double click. I'm going to reduce the size down. So pressing that Command or Control, we're going to drop it down in size. Something like that would be pretty good. Clicking on the green tick adjusting that drop shadow let's double click on the effects icon I'm going to come to the size going to drop the size down as we drop the size down that's the sort of effect I'm after let's click OK to that now I want to make sure this is right in the center of the image so how do we do that well if you just move it I'm going to deliberately place it off center like this we're now going to use command A control A which is select and all so we've now got a selection going around the outside. If we take a look over here, if I click on middle, watch what happens. That has now placed the title right in the middle of our image, so we don't need to worry about the placement of it anymore. Using Command D, Control D, that's Command D, Control D, which of course is select, deselect. There is our finished image. I'm now going to press Tab on the keyboard, which removes the panels. Let's put it onto a black background. Using Command 0, Control 0, we're going to go to Fit on Screen. There it is. There is our finished image with a matte border. We've got that uh, nice stroke area there and our inner drop shadow. Don't forget, you can add the title to it as well. Go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video, but until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.